think we're going. Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, that's for art. Uh, welcome to my channel. Thank you for staying with me and being on my channel. I'm going to be back. I know I said this before, but um, today was a big day in the anti-nuke movement. Uh, Dana Durnford was convicted of harassment. It. Uh, anyways, I've decided I'm going to come back and start making regular videos. I've been looking on YouTube and there's just not a lot of people talking about. My friend Ed said, oh, well, it's boring. We don't want to know, you know, like people are sick of talking about Fukushima and all of it. Really? We're sick of talking about uh, a few hundred people killing the planet? We're just going to lay down and fucking let them roll over us and we're going to do not jack shit, not even speak out. I mean, there are riots in Charlotte, North Carolina, which, ooh, shocks people. But, you know, it's not very many people. You know how many people come out in Europe? Millions, hundreds of thousands. A million people showed up in the street in China to shut down the building of a nuclear power plant, and it worked. So... Tonight, I'm going to do, I'm going to continue to read stories. Like, I found the articles that I've talked about. This one is a scientific study that I found that I couldn't use, and I just kept it. And I am not using it for commercial purposes. This is for public knowledge, and I'm reading it for those people that are impaired. And it is a scientific journal, and it's called, um, let's see, what's the name of the journal? Uh... L. Sevier Limited. This is, I don't think you can see that. Uh, but this is Accident Analysis and Prevention. This is the title of the journal. Testing the Validity of the International Atomic Energy Agency, in quote, IAEA, end quote, Safety Culture Model. Borja Lopez de Castro, Francisco J. Garcia, Jose M. Pier, Piero, Piero, Luca Pietratone, and Anna Hernandez. Um, they are with the Research Institute of Personnel Psychology, Organizational Development, and Working Life, IDOCAL, the University of Valencia in Spain, the Valencian Institute of Economic Research, IVIE in Spain, and the University of Bologna in Italy. And this was written, accepted, it was received November 2nd, November 12th, 2012. It was accepted as a scientific journal as it is a peer-reviewed journal, accepted August 13th, 2013. Empirical validation. Okay, so this is the abstract. I'm going to read to you the abstract because this was a bit of a shock. I am going to read this, and I'm going to read this. There's a few things I'm going to read. I'm going to tell you about it tonight, and then I'm going to report on some news, Fukushima news, things that are happening. Like, I am just dumbfounded that we're just willing to accept the mass deaths. And just say, oh, it's a mystery. The fucking crab off of Japan. It was not a mystery. <coughs> Honestly, it's annoying. This paper takes the first steps to empirically validate the widely used model of safety culture of the International Atomic Energy Agency. Composed of five dimensions, further specified by 37 attributes. To do so, three independent and complementary studies are presented. First, 290 students served to collect evidence about the face validity of the model. Second, 48 experts in organizational behavior judge its content validity. And third, 468 workers in a Spanish nuclear power plant help to reveal how closely the theoretical five-dimensional model can be replicated. Mm -hmm. Our findings suggest that several attributes of the model may not be related to their corresponding dimensions. According to our results, a one-dimensional structure fits the data better than the five dimensions proposed by the IAEA. 
Moreover, the IAEA model as it stands seems to have rather moderate content validity and low face validity. Wow. <clears throat> Practical implications for researchers and practitioners are included. So I'm going to read that. It's kind of a lengthy thing. It'll probably take me, I don't know, a couple weeks reading it part time. This is the second one. When was this one? I got this one. 5-9-2015. The title of it is called The Independent, Un In Independent Unaccountability, the IAEA's Step Backward in Regulating International Nuclear Safety in the Wake of Fukushima Daiichi Disaster. The author, James Gardner Long III. The source, Suffolk Transnational Law Review. Edition 36.1, winter of 2013, page 155. Hmm. Copyright Suffolk Law, Uni Suffolk University Law School. Introduction. <clears throat> hmm. In the wake of the 23-foot tsunami, the leveling of towns along the northeastern coast of Japan dominated international media attention rather than the looming nuclear crisis, which persists and may, be, and may make the area uninhabitable for decades. Hmm, not really anymore. Once the world realized the severity of the nuclear accident, dozens of nations responded by reevaluating their own nuclear safety policies. By June 2011, the follow, following the events at Fukushima Daiichi, the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, met to draft a safety plan for nuclear power plants worldwide. However, the draft adopted in September 2011 failed to assert sufficient policy changes necessary to safeguard citizens living near nuclear power plants. Three. When the national regulatory bodies and operating organizations fail to self-govern plant operations adequately, an international force must provide oversight and protect populations and the environment from exposure to deadly radiation. 4. This note will argue that the IAEA must mandate independent internationally based inspections of nuclear reactors in order to prevent an accident similar to Fukushima meltdown. The Fukushima meltdown. Huh. Should have said the Fukushima meltdowns. Plurals. Because member state governments and operating organizations continue to fail to safeguard citizens from nuclear disasters. 5. Part 2 of this note describes the independent excuse me. Part 2 of this note describes the incident at the Fukushima Daiichi reactor and its implications on international nuclear safety regulation. Part 3 of this note discusses the recent history of international regulation of nuclear safety and the failure of member state oversight. Number seven, part six of this note will analyze the absence of significant changes in nuclear safety regulations since the Fukushima Daiichi meltdowns. I added the S. The importance of international oversight because of incompetence of national governments to regulate nuclear power separately and to propose a new legally binding regulation, the Fukushima Convention. Hmm. Have we heard of that? I hadn't. In conclusion, Part 5 uh, provides, oh, that was Part 4. Part 5 provides necessary policy regulation for substantial prevention of another occurrence, particularly given the advanced age and poor condition of many nuclear power plants around the world. Mm, 9. The Heart of the Matter the meltdown at Fukushima Daiichi Reactor. This is going to be a good article. I'm going to read it again, kind of a fatty, so it's going to take a while. But man, you could find this. It's a, it, it, that's, a, that's a law thing. You could probably easily find that. That's not a, a scientific journal. So I'm going to get to seeing about some news. And 
Um, I'm going to leave the camera running. I'm going to read this article. This is so outrageous. What they said, it's under crime and legal. What bullshit this article and the comments in this article are outrageous. I actually refuse to just engage with these people because this is bullshit. Uh, this is uh, 923 2016. Staff writer Alistair Wanklin. Canadian activist found guilty of harassing scientists over Fukushima fallout. A Canadian environmental activist who waged a sub sustained online campaign against two prominent marine scientists was found guilty of criminal harassment by a court in Victoria, British Columbia on Thursday. The court heard that Dana Durnford, 54, threatened violence against Jay Cullen of the University of Victoria and Ken Buesler of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute of Massachusetts and accused them of underplaying the extent of damage to Pacific ecosystems from the 2011 Fukushima disaster. Now, do you see this part, the last part of this sentence? Reading the rest of this, it was never denied that he was wrong. Listen to what happened. This is the bullshit. And this is because of an arcane freaking law that was passed in Canada just a few months before they pursued this conviction. I mean, it was passed in May and he was indicted like June or July. It was bullshit. And tailored to this kind of like, he didn't threaten them. He, I heard the tapes before they were taken offline. They were just like tough guys talk, you know? Like it was just, oh, you ought to have your ass kicked, blah, 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 blah. It wasn't really a threat. I mean, he talked tough. But for goodness sakes, he's a 54-year-old man who is handicapped, work-related injury. And he went out and did some things by himself, which is not mentioned here. Listen to this bullshit. This is why I wanted to read this story, because this does really piss me off. Durnford was sentenced to three years probation. Okay, so this is, I expected and was pleased with the judge's court ruling, Cullen said. Cullen is just, he's from the Institute of Massachusetts. He's an American, I believe. What's the other dumbasses guy? I can call him jerks. J. Cullen, University of Victoria. Ken Busler is the American a-hole. Liars. These guys are murderers. These men went out and tested the water and said, oh, the ocean's fine. There's not much radiation in here. Well, they knew that perfectly well. Have they tested fish? No. Do they test the whales? No. Did they test those crabs? No. Mr. Durnford, on many occasions, threatened physical violence against scientists and others who have focused their attention and expertise to better understanding how the Fukushima nuclear disaster has affected the marine environment and health and human health. Such behavior is criminal. That is bullshit. He did not threaten you. It's bullshit. Buesler also welcomed the ruling. I bet you did, you motherfucker. Threatening violence is never an appropriate response to scientific findings you might disagree with. Not scientific findings, scientific methods, a-hole. That's the problem with you fucking dim-witted idiots making billions of dollars murdering fucking people, you bastard. Durnford, a former professional diver, has a large online presence. Hello, I'm one of them. He does have a large online presence. You know why? Because he talks the truth. He knows the facts. And he also didn't say a former diver. He's a former diver because he was handicapped in a accident and now is on sticks to help him walk. His unscripted videos recording in a mock television studio. It's not a mock television studio, fuckheads. It's just equipment that lots of people have around. It is a, a, a television studio. It's a home. It's not mock. It is a station. It's a, he's got a studio there to put on decent video so he can show us content and move around. Unlike me, who I'm barely learning how to do this. 
present what he purports to be research that contradicts mainstream scientific findings. Purports, purports, have you looked at his scientific research papers on his page? He alleges collusion between the, alleges, he is nice if that's all it is. There is collusion between the global scientific establishment and the nuclear industry over the danger presented by the nuclear industry. And in particular, the Fukushima debacle. Exactly. It's not alleges. We are saying the fucking facts. These bastards are killing us. Durnford of Powell River, British Columbia, did not respond to phone calls or an email for comment on Friday. God, can you blame him? In a video apparently recorded shortly before the trial began, he alluded to meeting court-related costs. They bankrupted us in these court proceedings in order to silence us, he told viewers. Well, you know what, Dana? I'm going to tell you what. They can't really bankrupt you because... They can't take your spirit, and that is where you really go bankrupt. They are bankrupt. They have no souls. We have life and love. We are willing to face what these monsters are doing to us. This is classic gaslighting. Okay, so let's see what else. I am on this rag, the Japan Times. Let's look at their opinion page and see what their opinion page says. Huh. Huh. Israel ponders the future without its fathers. Wow. A right-wing scare for Germany. Growth in senile dementia cases. You know why? Radiation causes dementia. Preventing youth suicides. More than 300 school children take their own lives every year in Japan. I wonder what the rate is here in America. I'm just going to read until I see something. Uh, you know, maybe I'll just stop here. I don't know how long I've been reading, but I, I'll stop. I'm at 17 minutes. So every night I'm going to try to put up a little video, read a little bit. I will I think what I'm going to do first is read Testing the Validity of the Atomic Energy Agency's Safety Culture. This, because this is a real scientific journal. And this says... They studied the habits. This I read this already. What they did was they studied the habits of the IAEA and compared it to what they say they do and what the actual results are. And their results are like far worse than we could even ever imagine. So I'm going to read that. Thank you for watching my channel. Um, I'm going to do this regularly because there's hardly anybody doing it. Uh, I would have been scanning for Fukushima or anything like that. Nothing, not even pictures of mutated flowers. There used to be a couple of people who did that. I know they're around. Uh, I even posted some from up there. So anyways, put your courage feet on, you guys. Um, remember, love is greater than fear, and happiness is resistance. So, like, let's refuse to be unhappy and look for solutions and demand the truth. Get corporations out of scientific results. <laughs> Ciao.